Hey everybody, Matt Ryberg, Crawford's Camp in Sioux Narrows. Um, usually this time of the year, everyone's trying to get a hold of us to go over different lures, stuff like that, that they would need for lake trout in the winter time through the ice. So I figured, you know, let's, uh, since we got a little bit more time this year, let's uh, get ahead of it. And we're just gonna kind of go over what I find to be the most productive, um, my consistent ones, my go-tos, uh, the thing that I would definitely put down the hole no matter what waiting for the a good bite so you originally I mean your Mr. Confidence was always your three inch Berkeley power bait uh, white tube they seem to not be making the three inch anymore or if you can find them you should buy a lot of them uh, but that was always consistently your best best lake trout bait through the ice in Whitefish Bay now they've gone with a three and a half, which I I tend to stay away from. I still think it's getting a little too big almost. It's a little thicker, it just seems to stay away from what our actual bait fish is when your Cisco melt, stuff like that. So I haven't gone this big. Some guys like it, I stay away. I've actually downsized and gone with the two and a half that they came out with. Um, and last year, it seemed to be a big uh, big ticket item there that uh, definitely caught a lot of fish brought a lot of strikes now when you're doing an insert for it um, this one <laughs> I've only ever known as it as a chiclet so it's just really thin looks like an old little chiclet candy uh, but when it's in that tube it kind of just allows a lot of drifting motion um, really good action seem to get a lot of bites the teardrop uh, jig heads work just as good too, um, but that's a combo that's always worked good for me. Um, we have, then we're going into now your minnow, well if we're actually going to stick to the tubes, let's go right to the, uh, the other one. Now this one is a local bait. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Thatcher in Nestor Falls has a company called Drop Tine Tackle. Uh, this is called a hunger strike. So you're a tube, uh, he's got multiple sizes, but it comes off with a nice spinner on the back back there for a little added flash, uh, a little bit more attractant, and it's got a stinger hook here on the back that allows for more hookups. We started using these when he brought them out, uh, got a few up to us uh, between me and Andrew uh, Rideout, our guide. We caught a lot of fish on these. Um, Thatcher's done a great job on these, some of the colors too. Um, let's see, like this is basically the setup within the tube. Uh, and he's got a whole bunch of different colors. But you can either check him out online. Uh, he does have a Facebook page for Drop Time Tackle. And then there is uh, a lot being sold in our local stores. Uh, if you're in Sioux Narrows, Gill's Trading Post has got them, but uh, if you're going online or something like that, check out Lake of the Woods Sports Headquarters. Pretty much everything we're going to go over, you can find at Lake of the Woods Sports Headquarters. Um, probably some of your local stores uh, in your states or in uh, in your towns, but I mean, for the majority of it, it's stuff that's consistently worked around here, so you're going to see it in those local stores around here a lot more, too. Um, and Lake Woods Sports Headquarters, they've got online sales, so you can go on there and be able to pick it up whenever you want. Um, now that we get off the tubes, you're going to look into your minnow profile baits. For years, that has been what I have definitely preferred your Berkeley Power Minnow. Uh, it's a four inch slim profile. Seem to consistently get bites. Um, the only issue with it is, is it is skinny, it's thin. So the l jig heads that I found that are best for them were the Northland Slurpee jigs. Um, they just have a small skinny shank with a couple barbed ends. So you could get it in there without tearing the plastic. So that's a big thing is not tearing this plastic when you're inserting your jig head. Um, that'll cause it to have a wrong motion in the water on your jigging and everything. And it's not going to last for more than a bite or two. So these ones, there is an issue with, you know, after a few bites, because they're skinny, the, those sharp teeth can really chew them up. So you're not going to get as many fish on 
one minnow as you would some of the other ones I'm gonna show you but uh, yeah between the the Berkeley tube and the Berkeley power minnow I mean if I had to keep two baits in my box for the entire winter and that's the only two baits I could have those are them those are number one number two um, hands down for me year after year consistently uh, now you're looking into a little bit bigger profile minnows you got kind of five inch minnows so these ones are a striking one they're the elastic so you really these kind of stick out um, these and the z-man ones z-man has been a little bit more um, easier to get a hold of seem to be consistently a little bit better on colors and stuff so we've been sticking to the z-man ones but with that elastic, I mean, you're not going to waste as much lures and you're not going to have to change as much during the winter. And for some, that's not a bad deal. You know, it's cold out there, right? So why not have those? Uh, this is the shiner color, I believe, or smelt color on Z-Man. So that right there is just the four inch um, scented jerk shed. Five inches pretty consistently what I've been using. Um, nip a little bit off the top and then you can insert a jig head into it. So that is the four inch minnow hooked up with what is called a smeltinator jig. Now these can be sold in your local stores but they're made and fabricated by the owners at Lake Lewood Sports Headquarters. And for vertical jigging any baits like this, minnow baits and stuff like that through the ice, you can't beat them. Um, there are knockoffs and everything out there, but these are the ticket item. These are the ones you definitely want to be buying from uh, the store. You've got different colors, so I mean, you're just you're playing white in a quarter ounce or anything, and they've got the rib shank, so it holds the bait for quite a while. Consistently, though, we actually like to just take a little bit of crazy glue. Um, the gel stuff works nice, keep her warm, and you just kind of once you get it up there, peel it back a little bit. Just insert a couple drops in there and that'll hold that plastic on there and you can just keep fishing all day long. Uh, multiple different colors. The purple and the gray for some reason seems to <laughs> trigger a few more bites. Um, white is consistently always your bait fish colors, but uh, that gray with that little hint of purple on there has been knockout for the last few years. So if you can get your hands on those, um, that's the five inch minnow it's got a little bit longer shank so it's uh it was for a few bigger fish um you don't need to go with the the four aught you can go down to the two aught uh, but again you want to have it on there as straight as you can and then that motion through the water is going to be uh, very familiar to the fish as what their bait fish is um Kytex, your swim baits, paddle tails. These just the same as the minnow baits. So I mean, you're just rigging them up with uh, the same jig heads and doing the same with the super glue, but they've been something over the last couple of years that we've been using more and more through the ice too. Uh, white, the ghost, sight flash, all these colors that got either a little silver fleck in them, white, or just an off white or pearl all seem to be really good. Storm came out with the search bait. So the small, which one is this, the three and a half. I've been using this one through the ice. Seems to work just fine for lake trout as well. Um, some days it seems like it might have a little bit slower motion. So you might find that they're not as active on it. You'll have them come in, chase it, but getting that really essential bite um, just changing their mind that little bit they may not do that with this one but if they're active that day you can catch a lot on that bait um, on the swim baits and the kytex lately just like the tube how it goes two and a half I've been sticking with the two eight uh, I've been doing a lot of smaller baits just because it seems I can get that extra bite or two above what other guys are doing um, smaller baits I mean, they may not hesitate as much on biting it, right? Uh, and then three threes, those are the other baits, that, the other size that I'd be using there. Now, let's see. 
I guess you do your minnow baits, your tubes, those are the consistent ones. What about spoons? So a lot of guys, I mean your old school spoons, the little Cleos, Williams spoons, stuff like that, and they still work. I can be hesitant on using them all I want, but I can get a guy in a hole next to me and he'll outfish me three to one some days just because that flash and the spoon. So I've been keeping one rod with the VMC Tingler spoon. Now when a Tingler spoon comes out of the package, I mean this is it. Your spoon, small hook on there. The one thing I have done uh, just about every time now is upgrading to a little bit bigger hook but something with some hair on it, some fur, some feather. It triggers more bites. It's definitely going to add um, a little something to it but uh, even a little bit more hook you're not losing as many as well. Emerald Shiner seems to be the number one color on the Tingler Spoons. So that's from VMC at Rapala. Now they also have the hooks as well with the feathers and stuff so you can look at them for both. Um, then I guess if you're gonna be getting all the tackle you might as well look into everything now when you're set up on your rods. Uh, a lot of guys are wanting to grab braided line, put on their reels. It's each their or whatever they want to do. Uh, your choice, but for me, I've stuck with mono on my reels. Now, I'm not getting froze up. You're not freezing on your eyes and everything like that as much as the guys with a braid. And I seem to have that little bit stretch so that I can let the rod do all the fighting. I'm not trying to horse the fish up or do anything like that. If he wants to roll and roll that line around him, take off on a run, he can do all that. I just let the rod and the drag do all the work and just keep reeling them in and you'll consistently find that you don't lose as many fish. When they get up towards the ice, they see the hole, they're going to take that big run. When they come back up, they're rolled around the line and they'll unspool themselves as quick as they can and it always leaves that slack. Plus we have to fish with uh, no barbs, so I mean it's always an added adventure, but that mono always seems to help me. Now on the mono I do put in a nice little barrel swivel in there uh, and that barrel swivel goes to about a three foot four foot fluorocarbon leader um, straight fluorocarbon uh, Suffolk seems to be the brand I've used over the last few years usually into about a 10 pound leader uh, and then again that's the smeltinator jig and a z-man minnow that's my go-to and then Tuned up custom rods. That's the uh, LTP, the 38 inch. I got this a couple years ago from uh, a buddy down there tuned up and I'm not gonna lie, this rod has been a game changer. Not losing as many fish. The fight is funner than it was before. Um, they get a little bit pricier, but the investment's worth it if it's something you're gonna do for years and years to come. Uh, I consistently went with the St. Croix, the Premiers. I mean, they were a cheaper rod, but they worked. I never lost that many fish. 13 Fishing has some good ones out now. Um, everyone's getting a little bit better, but you just want to find that balance of something that can allow you to use the rod to fight the fish. Uh, if it's too stiff, you just don't have that play and the fish can get away. If it's too light, you don't get that hook set and the fish can get away. So those are all uh, a few pointers. You definitely want, if you want to take them, you can. If you don't, <laughs> you can laugh at me all you want, but uh, I hope that helps. Uh, again, you can try any of the stores, Drop Tine Tackle, if you're looking for those tubes, for the Hunger Strike tubes. They're on Facebook, you can check them out there. Lake of the Woods Sports Headquarters, uh, www.sportsheadquarters.ca. They got everything you need there, so give them a look. Um, yeah, any questions, feel free to message us on the uh, Camp Facebook page. And we're hoping uh, to see you guys this winter. We definitely missed a lot of the uh, groups this summer. Um, this winter will be a little strange, but we're going to put on some hours on the lake and uh, see if we can have some fun, post some videos, uh, keep everybody up to date on what's going on. So uh, at this time, it's getting pretty close, so I just want to say Merry Christmas to everyone from... 
the Rydberg family and everybody at Crawford's Camp. We hope you're all doing good and staying safe. And we look forward to seeing you in the new year. Take care, everybody.